enter. I will enter his gate. I will. I will say. Oh, I, oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I. Oh, he has. I will. I will enter. I will enter. We're thinking. That the Lord has made. He has made me glad. Come on. He has made. Come on. I will. He has made me. I really just. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Angels bow. Heaven and earth. Yeah. What a holy God. What a holy, what a holy God. Angels bow, heaven and earth. <laughs> yeah, what a loving God we serve. <laughs> what a loving God. Angels bow. Heaven and earth, angels bow. Heaven and earth, angels bow. Heaven and earth, what a mighty. Amen, 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 amen. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Amen. I'm, I'm hurt that I'm, I'm praising today because I, I know that he's a mighty God and he has blessed me and blessed me and blessed me some more. And just to be here today, I'm, I'm grateful. Amen. Uh, this is our hour of worship. This is a time when we come to magnify the Lord and lift him up and to uh, testify to his goodness to us. Amen. Uh, we thank God for a chance to worship again. We thank God for our chance to be in your presence again. We thank God for a chance to witness his goodness again. Uh, our, our prayer list uh, for today is uh, Isaac Akers. Uh, he had hip surgery, and he's on the way to recovery from that. He's, he's up walking. He even went upstairs, made a trip up and down stairs once yesterday. Uh, we're praying for Christopher Williams. He's got surgery on his leg on Tuesday, the 8th. Uh, he's a son of Chris and Lilia. Lilia? Is that Lilia? Let me say it right. Okay. Uh, Rose Thompson, we're praying for her. Uh, Glenn Wilson, we're praying for him. He's been, uh, is he still back? It Anderson. Anderson Hospital, room 255. We're praying for Charlene Dosa. She's here, but she can't talk for a while. I think Leonard set that up, but he. <laughs> <laughs> but we're praying for her. Uh, a push board meeting was scheduled for this coming Tuesday. We're not going to have it on election day. We're having it the following Tuesday at 6:30. Amen. Harvest homecoming just around the corner. Amen. Please RSVP for the Fish Fry Fellowship on the Saturday. If you haven't done that now, you ain't going to get no fish if you have an RSVP because I'm not going to share mine. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, you see Deborah Pitts, Donald Wilkerson, or Tracy Mallet, and they're all here today. Amen. Amen. I saw all of them. Okay. Uh, so reservations must be made for you and your guests. So if you got guests coming in, you can have guests. 
but make sure that we know they're coming. Amen? Yes. Uh, check your email for additional information. Uh, Tuesday, get out the vote. Amen. Amen. Don't give up your right to have a say Amen. and who governs you and who judge and all that kind of thing. Take responsibility. And otherwise, you can't complain who they have because you had a chance to either say so and you didn't use it. So uh, please vote. We're, we're going to encourage you to vote. We're, we're not going to tell you who to vote for. Uh, you know, vote in your own best interest. Yes, that's how it's really designed, you know. The, the person who's going to do the things that I want done, that's what I'm going to put in there. Amen. Uh, I think that, uh, so okay, it's some other stuff here. I'm just uh, Mission Society is that uh, the Thanksgiving gift card request forms are now available. If you have someone in need and you want to fill out a form, you need to get the form and fill it out. If you got a question about that, see Ella Hutland, uh, Paula Pitts, or Donna Wilkerson. They'll help you out with that. Uh, Harvest Homecoming meeting immediately after church again today. Harvest Homecoming meeting. Uh, <coughs> the theme is fruitful harvest. That means that we know uh, a harvest can come, the time can come, but if you haven't sold anything, you don't get anything. So a fruitful harvest. So we, uh, uh, and it's found in Psalms 107, 37, 38. Uh, Christmas program is scheduled for Sunday, December 18th at 2 o'clock. Uh, and uh, for faith, faith practices are scheduled. Scripts and CDs are available. Sister Howard, Sister Angela Howard is the one you see for that. 792-0898. And, and we are we're, we're starting our youth choir back up again. The first rehearsal is November 29th. Now we're planning. Uh, we said we're gonna they're gonna sing on the third Sunday. We may alter that a little bit, but uh, if you got a young person in your life, and you know we can't let our children grow up without learning the praise. Right. Amen. Uh, I think a parent is responsible to make sure that 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 they know the Lord. I remember years ago when when Andy's last son was baptized, and he was so relieved because he didn't have to worry about his eternity anymore. You know, there are a lot of people out there who don't know the Lord, and it's our job to worry about their eternity. But especially those in our house, especially our children. So uh, we want you to invite people to our Harvest Homecoming. We have uh, aids like this. And you can use those and hand them out and say, hey, you know what? Uh, we have a Harvest Homecoming. Come share it with us. And better yet, come next Sunday. Let us talk to you about your soul, okay? Um, I think that covers all. Uh, make sure that we get notified any young people who have kids about our youth choir. Uh, our first practice is going to be at 630 on the 29th of November. So you've got plenty of time to order your business. You know, uh, people say that they're busy, and we are busy. But we got to make sure we got the things on our schedule that we need in our schedule. So sometimes we need to drop some stuff in order to add the right stuff. So keep that in mind. Sister Anya is going to come for our prayer. Good morning, church. Good morning, God's people. Good morning, prayer warriors. It's time to pray. You all, before we pray, though, don't we want to be a church found on our knees? Don't we want to be a church found on our knees? Y'all, we have no power until we pray. We have no power until we pray. There was something about coming together in a corporate setting and praying. The word of God says where there are two or three that gather in his name. Not just two or three, but two or three that are gathered in his name. Yo, he will work. He will be there in the midst. Now is that time where two or three are gathered and God is in the midst. I am going to ask that if you have a phone right now, you shut it off. 
If there's something in front of you that is distracting you from being present in this moment, I'm going to ask that you relinquish that at this time. I'm going to ask that you do a self-assessment of where you are at. Have you opened up your heart right now to allow God in, the Holy Spirit in, so when we pray, it's not in vain. Now I'm going to ask that you get in whatever position necessary for you to praise our Heavenly Father. Let's be a church that is always found on our knees. Holy Spirit, right now we ask that you enter this building. Lord, that you enter every human being, God. Every person that will hear the sound of our voice, God, that will watch this now or later, that will be here, that will go impact other people later. God, I am praying right now in the power of your spirit that we not rest on our laurels right now, God, but that we come to you as children, come to their parents, God, with fervent spirits, ready to receive whatever you have for us, ready to lay down our burdens because we know we can't carry them, God. It is only you who is true to this fight in this battle. God, you said if we are aligned and in agreement, there is authority. God, so I am praying that we be like Jesus. When he went up to pray, God, he said, Lord, if this cup can pass, but your will be done. God, your will be done right here and right now, God, and that we align to that will, Lord, that we not be afraid to scream out, help me, God. Help me, God, to see the way you see, God. Help me, God, to align to what you're saying. Help me, God, to hear your voice clearly at this time because I cannot. Help me, God, to love as you called me to love, Lord, to even love my enemies. Help me, God, to learn how to be a better believer. Help me, God, to be present and not be distracted, not let the ploys of the devil keep me from receiving the blessing and the love that you have for me. Help me, God. Say no to addiction. Help me, God, to break cycles, generational and just new ones. God, help me, Lord. Help me, God, to be a prayer warrior. What does that look like? Help me, God, to use my gifting according to your will. Help me, God, to understand your word. I read it and I don't get it. Lord, help me. Help me, God, to be a solution and not just a problem. Help me, God, to get over church hurt or people hurt or family hurt. Help me, God. Help me to understand the power that is in your name. Jesus. Jesus. God, we're, we're lifting up every person that we named already that's on the list, Lord, our prayer list. God, we are praying for their covering and their healing, God. Lord, we say fear is not our future, God. We say sickness is not our story, God. Lord, thank you for that. We say heartbreak is not our home, and we know death is not our end, God, and we thank you for that. Lord, so I'm praying for anyone that is on death's bed right now, Lord. Not knowing where their next meal will come from, God, where their healing will come from, God, we know that when the church is found on its knees praying, that healing will go forth, God, that, you're power, that you are working in places that we are not at. God, that you are overseas with our military, God, that you are in the Ukraine, God, that you are in Israel and in, Palest in the Palestine, God, that you are in the forest of Ghana, Lord, and you are here as well. You are here on the streets of Edwardsville where there is homelessness, God. You are in East St. Louis, God. You are in Madison. You are in St. Louis, God. You are here. And when a church prays earnestly and through the pain and the agony and perseveres until you move, God, we get to see miracles that surpass our expectation. God, I am praying that we be a persevering church, a church found on our knees, a church not afraid to say, help me, God, and thank you, God, in advance for what you will do. God, leaders that will lead in spite of the mess, God. People that will follow you in spite of what the world is doing. God, I pray we be a church found on our knees. God, we know that prayer is the answer, Lord, so we're not going to keep seeking and searching in worldly things, but we're going to come together here and pray and be on our knees and be found fighting in prayer. God, our weapon is our voice. Our weapon is your word. Our weapon is the relationship we have with you that can only be cultivated through prayer. God, thank you, Lord. We're praying that you break the chains off of our men, our young men, our old men, our toddlers, our babies. God, that we will look up and there will be men praying with their hands raised high, lifting up your name, God, unashamed. 
God, not locked by tradition or religion, not locked by culture or addiction. God, but here standing, believing in the miracle that you are. God, that women will serve and submit to your mission first, God. We will not just be doers, but we will be believers, God. We will be prayer warriors. We will be the wailing women in Jeremiah. Lifting up our children, lifting up ourselves, lifting up our men. God, I pray we be a church found on our knees, fighting in prayer. And then when you give us the authority, God, we go out and we be about your business, unashamed, relentlessly pursuing you. God, thank you. I pray in a year's time this church be filled, not just of people, but of your spirit. A miraculous movement, God. Lord, a transformed minds and hearts, God, of people being baptized and raised in the Holy Spirit. God, I am praying and thanking you in advance for what you will do. God, I ask that dead bones rise. God, the dead bones rise. God, the divisions that have not yet to come, come to pass, God, in a year's time. God, as Elijah continued to pray for rain, he kept praying for rain and praying for rain. And he had the faith to believe even when he sent his messenger out. God, and in due time, you brought the rain. God, I'm praying for the rain, the rain of your spirit, God, the rain of your healing, God, the rain of purpose, the rain of vision, God, that it happened right here and right now, that we be the people that you use for such a time as this. I pray that dry bones rise. We love you, God. We ask things in, a, in, in your powerful name, God. Jesus, your, your name is all powerful. Jesus, your name is healing, God. Jehovah Jireh, Lord, Jehovah Rifle, you are the healer, God. We thank you. And in your name we pray, believing it's already done. Amen. going to turn the whole church into a choir, okay? <laughs> and if the media room, if y'all can scan the audience while they're singing it, it'll be one big old choir. You can Google this song, lyrics to Because of Who You Are, okay? I'll give you a chance to look it up, no excuses. Let's sing that. Because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give. Yeah, come on, lift your voices. Because. again because of who you are
Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you reign. Couldn't help but think of Miss Rose. And ask God to bless her. him because of who he is to me. Uh, if you didn't get a copy of the outline, I think there's some more back there. I'm not sure. Uh, look, uh, look on the table where the offering plate is on this, on this side here. Yeah, there's a couple more back there. Okay, the outline. Okay. The outline. Okay, okay, okay. Exodus chapter 3. It looks long, but I only did 12 verses. I just did it big. I used to 
used to li use that 12 font, but it wasn't big enough anymore. <laughs> so I doubled it. <laughs> Amen. One, one more here, I think. Oh, oh, a couple here, yeah. It'll be on the screen, uh, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Let's read it together. I'll, I'll wait till he gets around. Such a blessing to be here today. Uh, my grandson successfully had a hip surgery. We've been praying for that, and that's a big step. Okay, okay, okay. We stopped doing outlines for a while because of COVID, but we're past that now. We'll try to provide something that you can remember or follow. But let's read together uh, Exodus chapter 3, 1 through 12. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock back of side of the desert and came to Herod, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land that good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Pezzizites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. And I, uh, the thought, uh, uh, who am I? I, I want it to be personal uh, to you. Uh, we ask people who they are. We meet them and we want to know where they're from, where they've been, and who their people are. And I wonder if we know who we are. I don't like to refer to it, but the last three years or so have been very challenging for the church. 
and for those of us who are a serious part of the church. There has been an attempt to push God and the things of God out of their place as central to our lives and mandatory parts of our lives. Back in 2019, when the pandemic began, those in charge decided that worship and the church were non-vital parts of what people do. Then for a short period of time, we were closed down. And that was bad enough, but something worse happened. Many of us bought into the assessment. Some of us drunk the Kool-Aid. So the church has struggled in the past few years to carve out again and to regain its place in the lives of many who used to worship regularly used to value worship. Some folks fell by the wayside during these years. It's been a real struggle to try to piece our spiritual lives and our, our worship back together again. And I know some of you don't, don't see it, but uh, we've been turned around and misdirected so many times that it's difficult now for us to know where we belong and who we are. Now, as, 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 as former people of God through faith, we have lost, some of us anyway, we have lost our identity. Who are we? And where do we go from here? We, we won't admit it, but it's scary for people who think that God is important in their life. You come to church or stream a sermon and what we're being asked to do, what we are expected to do, what we need to do seems beyond us now. A few years ago, I think it was three or four years ago, the women uh, did this thing on mask and they're taking off their mask. Anybody remember that? And, and, and they weren't talking about the COVID protective mask that we wear. They were talking about the hide behind mask that we all wear sometimes, the, the pretense mask, the, the cover up mask. And, and I bring that up in order to suggest that we take off our mask and be the real people that God has called us to be, like some of us used to be. Just to break the ice, I, I, I'll go first. Got it on, I'll take it off, okay. <laughs> I, I don't mind telling you that, that sometimes it's scary being me. Anybody else admit that? Sometimes it's scary being me. I, I, I put on a good front. I, I, I play the part with confidence, but deep down in my soul, sometimes I'm scared to death trying to live up to who I'm supposed to be. We might as well be honest. I, I've been preaching some, over 40 years, but, but I, I've, I've never once stepped up to preach without a reverential fear and respect for what God has called me to do. I have to remind myself daily of who I am. I'm, I, I'm called to be a husband. I'm called to be a, a father. I'm called to be a, a pastor, called to be a friend. And, and it's scary sometimes I try to figure out how to be who I'm supposed to be in the midst of all the obstacles we have, in the midst of all the, the, the feelings that come upon us. It's not always easy being us. 
Exodus 3 is a good illustration of what I'm, I'm talking about. In this passage, God gives Moses an assignment that he was uh, born to complete, and I, I'll, I'll get back on that point. One of the lessons I learned here is that if you let God, if you pay attention when God calls you, if you open your heart to what God has to say to you, he'll give you an assignment. I remember in the 11th grade, I was acting up in English class. And so the teacher noticed and she gave me a special assignment. I, I had to read and study the, uh, the book of Silas Marner, you know, and, uh, by myself. <laughs> so you, you obviously got a lot of time and, and let, me, let, me, let me feel some of that. But, but, but God has given all of us at least one gift that is useful for this body uh, we call a church. And, and we've been talking about how, how much of the, uh, 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 we miss uh, the choir not having come back uh, to sing yet since COVID. And that's an important part of, of those who value praise, but I also know that there are a whole lot more missing gifts in the church now. Uh, what would it be like if your left leg decided to take off? You'd be hopping and skimping. And, and some of us aren't paying attention to the fact that God wants to give us an assignment that he has already gifted us for. Yeah, you. And, and it's, it's time each of us gets off our duff. I'm not trying to be rude, and, and accepts what it is that God has assigned for us to do. None of us are just here to be here. None of us are just here to be here. Sometimes we, we think, I, I'm, I'm here now, and there are no other requir requirements. Worship is not just something that you attend to enjoy. That's the movie house. This is the church house. And what I'm trying to say is you too are, 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 are called to serve. None of us are just here to be here. Uh, God created each one of us for a, a purpose and all of us has an assignment. And I don't want to be critical or insulting to anyone, but some of us think that God is there for us to give him an assignment <laughs> instead of the other way around. <laughs> uh, we come in here and we put out, well, Lord, I want you to go here and do that and then give this to me and, 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 and fix that. And, and we never get around to, Lord, what is it you want me to do? I'm here to let you know that God has a, a big plan that, that, that you can be included in. It's not just about you. Uh, God is working his plan uh, that includes us, but it has to be his plan and not ours. Uh, we don't get to make our plan and give God an assignment in it. God had, had our assignment before he made us. I could say, I could say a lot more, but uh, let me get to the point. Uh, for a long time, we've been re referencing the, this passage, and uh, we've not really gotten detailed into it, so we're going to look at it today. Uh, Moses was the son of a Levite man and woman. He was born during the time of the children of Israel being in bondage in Egypt. Now, we know that they got there and they came there as guests because Joseph was there and he saved the day by predicting the, uh, the drought. And uh, so they came in as guests. But by the time Moses came along, uh, Joseph, the 11th son of Jacob, 
How many knew that? That Joseph was the 11th son of Jacob. You, you, ought, you ought to read the Old Testament. Okay. Uh, who, who bought, Joseph bought the children of Israel into Egypt. And the Pharaoh who made him the prime minister of Egypt was dead already. So this new Pharaoh didn't give the children of Israel the same status in Egypt that they had with his predecessor. Instead, he feared them because of their rapid growth. Uh, in fact, he moved them from the status of being honored guests to slaves. And over time, their bondage became uh, harder and harder and more, uh, more harsh. And the Bible doesn't give us a, a, a timetable for when God heard and, and began to act, but, but uh, they cried out to God. And as they cried out to God, God developed a plan for their deliverance, and that plan included Moses. I told you earlier that, that God had a plan that we, we could be included in, so uh, this is Moses' plan. And, and we may not understand all the happenings in our life. This is big. But God orders things according to his plan. And in that plan, God often includes stuff, and, and this is our problem. Uh, in, in, in God's plan, he sometimes includes stuff that we would leave out, and he leaves out stuff that we try to put in. You were born where you were born, with the parents you were born with, and in the situation you were born in, according to God's plan. When Moses was born, Pharaoh had ordered the, the male children uh, to be thrown into the, the, the Nile, the river. He, he didn't want them to keep growing like that. And, and, and Moses was, was uh, one of those sons, one of those boys, and, uh, but God led his mother to hide him out as long as she could. And when she couldn't hide him out no longer, uh, she put him in a basket and, 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 and put tar, I guess you call it, around and, and, and set him in a river. But at the same time, God had arranged for Pharaoh's daughter to be bathing in the same river. And to make a long story short, she found the little Hebrew baby and fell in love with him. And claimed him as her own son. So, so Moses was a Hebrew boy born of a Levite Jewish person. But raised in the palace of Pharaoh. While being nursed by his Hebrew mother. All perfect for what he needed to do. And, and as he grew to, to adulthood, the, the Bible says that he chose to be one of the Hebrew slaves in bondage rather than be part of the household of Pharaoh. That's a funny choice. And in that state of mind, uh, 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 Moses killed an Egyptian trying to yeah. help a Hebrew. And he had to flee, uh, flee Egypt for his life. Now, in our text, well, we, we couldn't read all of it. Uh, uh, we find Moses in Midian having adopted a, a, a whole new lifestyle and, and married a woman from Midian, uh, 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 had two sons of his own. And he no longer had the luxurious life or the choice of a luxurious life in the Egyptian palace. He was no longer a slave, a Hebrew slave there. But he was satisfied and content in his new life. Moses' plan... See, see, God got a plan, and a lot of us have a plan. <laughs> Moses' plan uh, was to be a shepherd in his father-in-law's sheepfold and to stay in Midian the rest of his days. How many of us have made ourselves satisfied with the life we have? even though we know it's not the life we dream about 
or aspire to or that God wants us to have. And I'm not being critical of that. Uh, uh, this is not the case with Moses. Uh, 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 Moses made himself satisfied with what he shouldn't have been satisfied with. So, so, so sometimes God's plan is different from our plan. I said, sometimes, Anya, God's plan is different from my plan. I, I thought I was going to law school. And God said, uh-uh. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with, with those who are, are called and meant to go to law school, but for me, that wasn't God's plan for me. So what do you do when, 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 when God's plan is different? From your plan. The children of Israel were still in bondage in Egypt. Sometimes we think that if we just ignore God and go on about our business that he'll, he'll forget about it. <laughs> they were crying out to God. And Moses was still in God's plan to deliver them. So, 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 so Moses was tending the flock of Jethro uh, uh, in Mount, on Mount Harab, the mountain of God. And, and, and the angel of the Lord, the, the messenger of God, the uh, theologians say it was the, the word of God, uh, the one who later became the son of God. And this passage calls him the angel of the Lord. The angel of the God appeared to Moses in a bush. You know, and it's funny because people talk about the burning bush, but that bush wasn't burning. He thought it was burning because it was glory. It was firing. And he could understand how or uh, why uh, the bush was burning, but it didn't disintegrate. So he decided to stop and, 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 and go see. But I never seen a bush burn that long and not burn up. You may not know it, but, 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 but God got Moses' attention and... and, and some of the stuff that is happening in your life, I know you never thought about that, yeah. just might be God trying to get your attention. Yeah. You ever wonder, say, well, why this happened? Why did it happen? In the color purple, they sing a song, maybe God is trying to tell you something. Moses was instructed to take off his shoes because uh, the ground on which he stood was holy ground. Uh, God was there, and, and we got to respect and honor where God is. Uh -huh. And I love the story. Uh, then God introduced himself. He says, I, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And in other words, we got a history. Anybody have a mother or a grandmother that prayed? And, and when you thought about it, all of a sudden, you, you began to think about God and, and uh, uh, that prayed for you, and uh, those prayers are still working in your life. God explained that he has seen the oppression of his people in Egypt, and he said, I, I heard their cry for, I know their sorrows. I've had times in my life when I wondered if God knew my sorrows. I, I, I wondered if God knew what I was going through. I, 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 I prayed sometime, Lord, you, you, do you see what's going on? You, you ever just say, Lord, Lord, help me. Can you see I'm in trouble down here? Can you see what I'm, what I'm going through? I, I don't want to go through. I'm glad he's there to, to ask for help. Sometimes it feels like God isn't paying attention. And what I see here is that he knows. God told Moses that he had decided to bring Israel out of Egypt. I, I'm a witness today that God will hear your prayer and bring you out. It may be a while, you know, and, and for a long time I didn't read that scripture where it says uh, after you suffered for a while. And nobody liked that one. But it does say after you suffer for a while. 
but God never fails. Uh, scripture tells us that we, we may have to go through for a while, God will, but God will show up. When, when God shows up, he always comes through, I think. This passage lets us know that, that no matter how bad it looks, that, that no matter how impossible it seems, that yeah. God has got a plan. We talked about it in, in Sunday school this morning. And, but uh, God, God's plan works if you work it. God's plan will work if you work it. I mentioned this morning that, that I don't like it when people say uh, the Bible says this but. In other words, they're going to discount what the Bible says. Somebody missed it. God's plan works if you work it. The problem is that we sometimes don't work it. We need to cooperate with God in his plan. So let's look, look at Moses' uh, a response to God's plan. Uh, look at verse 11. But Moses said to God, now God didn't talk to him now. You, you, you ever try to tell somebody something and you can't get it out before they're telling you something? <laughs> I brought this up a few weeks ago, but I, I didn't really get into it. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I try to be careful about wh what I say to God. Who am I? Moses said that I should go to Pharaoh and that I, underline I, and he's not saying that, 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 that it doesn't need to be done. What he's saying is, who am I that I need to do it and, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now, now the way in, we talked in Madison, uh, wait a minute, God. I've been to Egypt. In fact, I, I was born there. I, I, I was raised in a palace and, uh, in Pharaoh's house, but I, I got myself in a lot of trouble. Yeah. You ever been someplace that you don't want to go back to? Because <laughs> you. <laughs> God, I, you know, I was, I was trying to take up for that, that, that Hebrew guy in trouble, and I, 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 I killed that Egyptian guy, and I don't want to go back there. I know how powerful Pharaoh is. I, I know all the, uh, the soldiers he's got, and I know all the chariots he has, and, 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 and they're already after me. In fact, my face is probably on a post in the courthouse. <laughs> and you want me to go back and get in Pharaoh's face? You want me to rebuke him about having the children of Israel in bondage? Who am I, God, that I should do that? I can't see it. You think maybe you got the wrong guy? I know somebody got to go, but you think it ought to be me? Has God ever called you to do something that you couldn't see yourself doing? But it's not what we see, it's what God sees. Yeah. Has God ever laid a path out for you that you couldn't see yourself traveling? Have you ever had to stop and ask God and, and ask, ask yourself, who am I that I should do that? I, when he called me to preach, I... I I asked that. I said, Lord, I can't even talk good. <laughs> How I'm going to preach. I called me the pastor. Well, Lord, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for that. Mm -hmm. you, you know, athletes, when the game clock has run down, there's only a few minutes left, a few seconds left, and all of a sudden the ball's in your hand, and you think, 
who am I that I should take the last shot? Who am I that I should throw the last pass? That I should make the final decision? You, 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 you ever have a spot and you want to say, oh, wait a minute. I don't want the responsibility. And many of us may never uh, put that question to ourselves or to God, but we need to know who we are. What would be your answer if, if someone asked, uh, who are you? What are you telling yourself about yourself? Where is your place in the world? Where's your place uh, uh, in the family? Where's your place in the company? Have you ever wondered what God made you for? Who are you? And young people uh, struggle with that especially. Who am I? What are your talents and gifts given to you for? If you got some. What do you fit in the family? Where do you fit in the church? Who are you? And I've come today to let you know that you count. To let you know that uh, you're valuable. To let you know that uh, you got a function. To let you know that you have a, a place in this world, that you, you got a place in the church. Amen. There's nobody here who's an accident. Right. Nobody here who's an also ran. You were created and, and sent here on purpose, for a purpose. Amen. And you were given gifts. That will make room for you. Yes, you are part of the plan God has for this world. Uh, you are a factor in, in, into what God has in mind for your family. Uh, you are a vital part of what God has in mind for the church. Yes. It's just that you are somebody. You are important. You're valuable. You know, the, the, the world puts us down and devalues us, but God picks us up. Egypt and Pharaoh were okay with Moses disappearing. In fact, they were glad he was gone. But God called him and sent him back to do what uh, he was created to do. And many of us in, in, in this place, uh, 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 we're doing things that are not us. And we're afraid to change because we don't know who we are. And, and I'm going to take a couple of few extra minutes here. Uh, the prodigal son found himself tending a herd of pigs and feeding himself with the slop that they ate. But one day, deep in the stench of all of that, the Bible says he came to himself. And he thought about who he was and began to realize that where he was and what he was doing wasn't him. And I just wonder today, how many of us are here in, in, in things, uh, living in ways that are not us, doing things that are uh, not us? I remember being a young man in the military in, in Germany, uh, mostly uh, some 4,000 miles from home, uh, sowing my wild oats. I'm taking the mask off, smoking stuff I hadn't been smoking and uh, living an ungodly life. And then one evening in the midst of all of that, asking myself, who am I? And realizing that I, I, I wasn't doing what I, that wasn't me. Yeah, 
when are you going to realize that what you're doing and where you're doing it is not you? I don't know nobody's business. I, I love God's response to Moses' question. Uh, notice, if you will, that, that, that God didn't tell Moses who he was right away. He just told him who he was. He said, I, I will certainly be with you. And I learned that I, I couldn't really know who I was. This is, this is big now. Don't try to define yourself outside of God. I learned that I couldn't really know who I was until I realized who God was. And when you don't know who you are, it's always helpful to know at least who you're with. And when you begin to doubt yourself as, as to whether you belong or not, and that's a good process to go through. When you get fearful and, and wonder if you can make it or, or if you can do what is called for you to do or not. Remember this interaction between uh, God and Moses. Remember that God made a promise to those who, who trust him with their lives. And uh, he said, I will certainly be with you. That's the important thing. It's sometimes it's not who you are, but who you got with you. Uh, and God is faithful, and that means that you can trust him to be with you. And not only that, uh, God is for you. And when God is for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Okay, Pastor, wait a minute. I'm, 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 about, to, I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. There's still a question on the floor. Moses asked God who he was to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let the people go. And maybe I missed it. Did, did God answer him or just did he change the subject? The answer is yes. God changed the subject in order to answer him. If I have more time, I'll go into more detail. But in, 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 in the time between my beginning to work on this message until the, I call myself completing it, I began to read a book by Chip Ingram on holy ambition. And in that book, Chip asked about our view of ourselves and our view of God. And when Moses asked God who he, Moses, was, and God answered Moses by looking at who he, God, was, it really made perfect sense. We may think we know who we are, but we don't really know who we are until we have a good concept of who God is. Let me explain. Uh, you see, God made us. And because God made us, only he knows and only he has a right to determine who we are. Listen, who I am, who we are, is really about who God made us to be. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> who I am, who we are, is really about who God made us to be. I, I, I don't know what, 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 what path you went down. I don't know what you're trying to do with your life. But who you are is really all about who God made you to be. I can decide who I want to be and, and set out to be that, but uh, the end result is really going to be about how well who I want to be is in sync with who God created me to be. You see, our best life can only happen when we partner with God on his will for us. Now, you can live life outside of that, but it won't be your best life. Our will for ourselves is not enough. 
No matter how hard you try, you will not be able to make it happen satisfactorily by yourself. I'm in this life, and I call it a successful life because I'm in it with God. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sync things with God. I, I, I have some ideas, but I, when I go back and check with God, sometimes they don't fit. I, I'm doing stuff in this life that I'm uh, trying to do stuff that he told me to do. And I'm saying stuff in this life that uh, hopefully that he told me to say. Uh, Paul said it like this. He said, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live, I live by the power of God who loves me and gave himself for me. I don't have a right to live any, kind of other, any other kind of life. I, I'm a partner, but I'm a junior partner with God. I'm running out of time to wrap this up. So if you want to know who you are, Ask God who created you. Ask God who created the plan for your deliverance if you're in trouble. Ask God who paid the price for your sins. Ask God who, who and, 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 and what he wants you to be. Young people, if you're trying to figure out a way or trying to figure out a, a path for your life, it's okay to, to, to take the aptitude test because uh, the gifts God gave you are going to fit what he has for you. Moses, go and tell Pharaoh that God, the God of Abraham, uh, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent you to tell him to let his people go. Satan can't hold you when God says let you go. Fear can't stop you. When God is with you, do you belong to yourself or do you belong to God? It's okay to have ambition. I believe in that. But your ambition has to be holy ambition and not selfish ambition. And I, I, I know this is hard to swallow, but, but life in this world is not about you. It's about God. I'm proud to be God's boy. Knowing who you are begins with knowing that it all begins and ends with God. Life is about God and his will and his way. You ought to be God's girl or God's guy. You ought to be God's servant. I am who I am. By the grace of God. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to answer it the way we need to answer it. Help us, Lord, to subject ourselves to your will and your way. Help us, Lord, to get on the track that you have laid out for us, to use the gifts that you've given us, to be a blessing to those you want us to be a blessing to, and in the process, bless ourselves. We thank you for it, Lord, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. The doors of the church are open. Now, if you are coming to reunite or join the church, come here. If, if you just want prayer, uh, 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 Sister Howlett, come here. And if, if you want prayer, either go to Sister Howlett or go to Sister uh, uh, Minister uh, Anya. If you want to join the church, come right there. you're entitled to be prayed for, you're entitled to be, you know, sometimes we don't know what we need, we just know we need. 
Anybody have been a truck driver? I don't know what it is, but I just need. Don't be ashamed. We're all in the same boat. There are none yet there is room. for that. I pray we finished what we needed. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 says, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus for the, sa the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. We're, we're, we're thinking back on Christ's death and we're thinking back on why he died and we're realizing that he did it for us so this is not a measure of how righteous we are this is a measure of what Christ did for us 
See, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be saved based on my righteousness. But beca because I trusted Christ as my Savior and he was righteous. You see. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So, so this is not a game that we pretending for our neighbors to see. But let a man examine himself. Look in the mirror, not at the window. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This is special. Important. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So we're, we're celebrating uh, a sacrifice that Christ made. We're, we're celebrating uh, the thing that he did that set us free. And, and we're, we're appreciating. Uh, the old folk used to think, used to say that uh, if, you, if you went out last night, then you shouldn't take communion today. I disagree. I, I love them. I disagree. <laughs> We're celebrating salvation. And maybe last night wasn't my best night. But I'm still saved today. And I'm, I'm celebrating what Christ did to get me there. That, that makes sense. Let us eat and drink. Let me welcome Tina Wolford for joining us. God bless you. Glad to have you. Harvest Homecoming Committee meeting in the lower level right now after church. Amen. Did I say it right? All right. Father God, we thank you. Uh, uh, we praise you. We honor you, Lord, for what you've done for us. As we leave this place, Lord, go with us and stand by us and allow us to come together again. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest within the Bible with us and forth now forevermore. Amen.